another beautiful Sunday afternoon. This is Robin Minds. Welcome. My name is Abu Kao Buchendu. Thanks a lot for joining us. Um, we have a great show for you today. It's great to be back. Um, there's a lot that's been happening uh, in the country. We are uh, going to be focusing today, though, on accountability in governance. And of course, uh, 2023 is very heavy on the minds of a lot of people. We just had the elections in Anambra State, which uh, went by... We can say hitch free to an extent, but at least um, we did hopefully learn some lessons there, especially with how INEC is going to be um, running uh, some of the major elections coming up in the next uh, year plus, um, especially the 2023 general elections, uh, which we are already gearing up for. We've already seen a lot of posters and flyers around the country talking about um, uh, candidates who are already gearing up for that. Uh, but yes. We are going to be talking about all of that and more, uh, zoning in most importantly, like I said, on accountability in governance and how we can hold government accountable, especially those who are going to be making promises to us um, in the months to come. I'm joined now from our Abuja studios by Jude Ferrami Adejo. Uh, if you can hear me, Jude, how are you doing? Jude, can you hear me? Hello, Ebukar. Um, I can hear you. Thank you very much uh, for joining us today. I uh, just want to zone in a little bit on, you know, uh, your thoughts on accountability with government, because I know that on the 9th of December, I think in 2019, uh, the Nigerian government launched a new financial transparency policy uh, and a web portal sort of to provide uh, the public with better insight into government and governance uh, as a whole, especially with regards to expenditure in government. Uh, we're about two years down the line since that uh, was launched. What are your thoughts on how that has worked with regards to access to information and being able to actually hold government accountable? Okay. Um, uh, thanks, thanks for having me, Hebukor. One of the, uh, I mean, transparency and accountability is something that we, that we hear uh, go together most oftentimes um, when we talk about issues like this. Uh, the portal that the government has put together um, that you mentioned 2019 December um, is an effort at increasing transparency. Um, it's a completely different conversation when we now come to accountability. Um, being transparent means that uh, through digital tools, for example, this online portal that the government has done, uh, and through maybe other channels, for example, newspapers, um, freedom of information request. The government, um, across all levels, federal, state, local government, is being transparent with their activities, especially financial transactions. Um, and what happened December 2019 must be commended uh, by the government. It's an effort that has been uh, going on for a long while now to, I wouldn't say force, but to nudge the government into adopting this kind of um, um, approach to governance in our country. Um, Accountability, on the other hand, uh, is a different ball game. For example, uh, since 2015, actually, a number of MDAs have yet to uh, file their report with the Auditor General of the Federation. Um, uh, and this is now talking about accountability. Um, if you go to the portal, you see these transactions that have been put there by different MDAs. Um, some MDAs still have very, very difficult time giving you uh, information when you send an FOI request. Uh, some of them take time. Um, some of them ask you to pay for all the bulky for the copies that needs to, that needs to be done. Um, but when it comes to accountability, and by accountability, I mean if you are a public servant and you have spent public money, then you should be held accountable for how you spent that money, what that money was meant for, if that money was supposed to be spent in that manner, uh, and uh, how it impacts the lives of people. So this is where uh, we're still yet to find progress, let me put it like that. Uh, and that's my general opinion about it. We must commend that effort in transparency by the government. Um, that's clear. Uh, but how do we hold government accountable for what they're doing and for how they're spending the money that they're spending. Um, for example, if the Auditor General's report uh, uh, has not been considered for the last, I mean, uh, six years now, uh, and National Assembly under which that office is. In fact, there is a, there is a bill in National Assembly 
um, that seeks to increase the powers of the Auditor General to be able to uh, do some enforcement, you know, carry out some punishment for these MDHs that uh, failed to send their audit reports over the, over the last uh, one year. It's supposed to be an annual exercise. Um, so this, these are the issues that we have with accountability. There are definitely a lot of organizations um, still fighting um, and trying to nudge the government to say there has to be an accountable process for every action that you take uh, as a public servant, whether you are a director or a deputy director um, or the head of an MDH uh, or an appointed minister, for example. So, I mean, I, I kind of feel like this gives you an overview of what I, what's happening right now when it comes to transparency and accountability. We're getting more transparent. We definitely can do better. Uh, but on the accountability hand, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of very, very, uh, there's not so much progress there. Uh, we, I mean, we can talk later about uh, the judicial system and how you still keep on hearing lots of people who are going through 12 years court cases, mistrials, um, and the very, very many ways that people who are public servants or elected officers seek to bypass justice for the people uh, because of how flawed our judicial system is. But again, like I said, we'll here, you, transparency, we're doing better. Accountability, yes. Yes, so just, sorry to butt in here, because we, we we, this government has been in power now, uh, going on its final lap um, very, very soon, going on seven years. Um, and we did get a lot of promises at the start of this government. And um, we expected, you know, certain things, at least a certain level of accountability, which was what we were promised as well. So I want to see, where do you think we are from when we started in 2015 to now? Are you satisfied? Because people keep asking, how do we hold government accountable? And it just seems like there's no way to do that, you know? Sometimes, I mean, when Twitter is so still suspended now, but when we had that sort of medium to question maybe government officials, we always got sort of very official replies, even when we got any. So you wonder, for the average Nigerian, you just there still feels like there's no, um, how do I put it, government is still there, like far away from the people, when we expected sort of more of a synergy or uh, a more of a face-to-face -face sort of interaction with our government. Do you think um, we are where we should be? How are we doing? So um, I, let me, I think we should stay, take it from the, the Twitter conversation. Um, and one of the things that uh, tweet, the banning Twitter took away um, was that there was no direct, or let me say seemingly direct interaction between the governed and those who are governing. Um, and it is unfortunate. A lot of people quote the numbers and the millions that Nigeria is losing by banning Twitter. Uh, but you see that that direct interaction is, is missing. Um, there, are, there are MDHs who have Facebook pages, for example, um, and those Facebook pages are inactive. Um, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure I've ever encountered uh, a lot of MDHs on Instagram. Uh, but Twitter was the platform where we went to uh, or where the young people of this country went to uh, hear their grievances and say, this is what is happening. Um, so taking that away is doing a lot of uh, harm to that kind of citizen government interaction that should exist in a democracy. And I think the word that you're looking for earlier was a social contract, right? If you were being governed by a certain set of people in a democracy uh, and you have elected them, then there should be an obligation on the part of those who are, who are governing, on the part of those who are elected to communicate directly um, with those who, are, who, who they are governing. And that's something that we don't have in Nigeria or that we have very little of, um, if I'm going to be accurate. Uh, that interaction is, is just missing. Okay, sorry, and Jude, I, sorry to cut you in there. We're joined now by another guest now, Sandra. I'll come back to you, Jude. Um, we're joined via Zoom uh, now by another guest, uh, Sandra Izakwesili, who's a broadcast journalist. Um, Sandra, thanks a lot for joining us. Um, we're talking accountability, and of course, 2023 is around the corner, and we are probably going to go into the season of more promises again uh, in 2022 with all of the states and national elections that we'll be holding. Um, but I want to talk about the states now, because in, in Nigeria, we tend to focus a lot on the federal. I mean, fair enough, considering the kind of system of government we run. Um, but... Um, Talking about holding, you know, gov government accountable, um, it seems even harder 
at the state level where you would expect that government is probably closer, you know. Um, government, state governors are pretty much empires, if I can call them that. You know, local governments don't exist. State houses of assembly almost, uh, you know, don't exist in a lot of these states. So how do we as Nigerians start to, you know, have these conversations on a state level to say, you know, if you've promised us this, how do we hold you to it uh, when the time comes? I think it starts with, first of all, um, deprogramming the average Nigerian uh, from central thinking. So everybody's always focusing on the center because for a long time, Nigeria's um, history, Nigeria's power came from Abuja. And so it allowed the states to hide their incompetence, right? So if Nigerians can begin to remember that, okay, we're not in military era anymore. We're now in a civilian era. We're now in a democratic era. So that means that uh, governance is local first before it is federal. We can then begin to hold our states accountable, starting with the local governments. Now, I host a radio show called Hard Facts, and all the time people will call me and say, hey, we can't do anything with the local governments. We can't do anything because the state's control who becomes the local government chairperson Person, right? But you shall know who the local government chairperson is. You shall know where their office is. They will shall come back to you to ask for votes, uh, just like they did this year in June when they had to be re-elected after years of not doing anything for the various local governments in, for example, Lagos, which is where I live. When they come back to ask for those votes, well, what do you do? When it's time for elections, do you sit in your house or do you come back out to say, you did not function as a local government chairman. We're going to make sure that you're not re-elected as a local government chairman. Because the reason why elections can be rigged in Nigeria, election day, to make sure that there's no vote buying, there's no ballot box snatching, and there's no fixing, uh, and there's no changing of the numbers after the votes have been have, have, have come in. It can only happen when there's like five people in one polling unit. But if more and more people come out on election day and more and more people continue to speak truth to power, continue to complain about uh, some of the dividends that they're getting uh, from this democracy, we will find that we can actually hold local governments accountable, um, state governments accountable before we can begin to look at the far away federal government. So one of the biggest issues, I think, uh, which is very glaring, is that the mistrust, uh, it's, it's almost mutual from government to the people. You know, you hear a lot of Nigerians say, we don't trust government because we hear these promises every time and nothing ever comes out of it, whether it's during elections or when they're trying to diffuse whatever situation it is. We also see a lot of government statements, you know, accusing citizens of certain things. Oh, Nigeria is not getting investments because you people are not saying the right things. You know, Nigeria is not doing well because you guys are that. You know, so it most feels like the mistrust or, for want of a better word, the dislike <laughs> even is almost mutual. Is this sort of a dead end? How do we start to broker that for things to start looking, you know, a little better than they are now? citizens should not trust the government, no matter the country. That's why there are elections. Elections assume that you could find out something that you dislike about your government and decide to remove them. What you see from government is not mistrust, it is fear. Governments worldwide hide information from citizens because they fear that citizens will get angry and remove them. Now, you're not going to um, change that what needs to change is what citizens do about their mistrust for government. That mistrust should lead to more vigilance and more scrutiny. And government needs to grow up. There's nothing that we can say about the country that anybody who wants to invest in the country doesn't already know, simply by paying attention to the news or sending their own um, background checkers or due diligence officers to find out, well, what is business like in this country? What are things, what's the climate like? What's the environment like for me who wants to be an investor? So it's not Sandra Isabelle tweeting on Twitter that will make an investor say, yeah, I'm not going to invest in that country. It is the government waking up one morning and saying, oh, you know what's going to happen? We'll, ba we'll ban our bookie forex because our bookie forex is um, uh, messing with the dollar. It is things like waking up one morning and deciding that, 
uh, Gokada in Lagos, uh, you know, we're going to shut down their operations because we don't want Gokada in Lagos. It is things like waking up one morning and banning cryptocurrency because you think that this is something you cannot control instead of looking at how other countries are trying to get things done and looking for how you can actually regulate this, this, this new innovation. So it's not by what we're saying on social media or elsewhere. It is by the policies that the government continues to enact, which include shutting down the border for more than a year. All right, we are about to go now, but very quickly in one sentence I want to get from you and then to Jude. Like I said, election season is very, very hot in the air already. What should Nigerian citizens look out for uh, as 2022 approaches? Very quickly. Hmm. Well, here's the thing. After getting your PVC, I think you should make your votes count. I think you should pay attention to the things that people are promising. And for every promise that is made, you need to ask, how are you going to do it? You need to remember that Nigeria is broke. So everyone they tell you they'll do will provide free computers. How? Where's the money going to come from? We're going to do this. How? Where's the money going to come from? Whatever they're asking you to do, remember to ask how. And after election day, when you've cast your vote, make sure that you go with those votes to the collation center. Because like one particular uh, U.S. diplomat said at one time, the devil is at the collation centers. <laughs> All right, let me go to you now, Jude, if we still have you, Jude, in Abuja. Same question to you. Um, uh, election season is uh, very hot uh, around the corner. What should Nigerians be listening to? What should they pay attention to as the politicians start to talk to us again? Um, I, I think I'll just take it up from one of the things that uh, Sandra said. Uh, earlier before this last question. And that is that there is um, a level of mistrust, which I mean, citizens shouldn't fully trust their government. Um, that, that level of mistrust can lead to cynicism. Uh, and that is something that Nigerian citizens should not do going forward. You should not be cynical. Cynicism can lead you to saying, uh, well, my votes don't count, so I would rather not just vote. Um, cynicism can lead you to saying, uh, uh, people are going to snatch the ballot boxes anyway, so uh, I'm not going to go out there to exercise my, exercise my franchise. Or it can even lead you to saying, now that they've been elected and they've made all these promises, well, they are Kuku going to not do anything, so I'm just going to leave them alone and not hold them accountable. Your duty as a citizen is to, number one, hold those leaders accountable, participate in the voting process because your life depends on it. And if there's anything, any message that I think Nigerians, especially young Nigerians, should be hearing right now, it is that you have a responsibility as a citizen to, to shape the kind of country that you want. Uh, again, like I said, or, and like Sandra also already mentioned, voting, getting your PVC, going out there to vote. And when those politicians mention all those promises, holding them accountable to those promises on a year by year, like on a daily basis. Uh, politicians say, I mean, politicians are elected for four years and they say uh, they are the politicians are the ones who are elected. But you're also a citizen for four years, uh, at least until the next election cycle for, uh, <laughs> at least also until you decide to maybe jack out of the country. And <laughs> even if you're a young person, you're living All in the country, you're still a citizen. So that comes with responsibility as well. Getting your PVC, voting, holding leaders accountable and following up with the judiciary system. Thank you very much, Jude Ferromi Adejunwa, and of course, Sandra Isaacwesley for joining us. Like I said, 2022 is about to be the year of the politician in Nigeria, and hopefully the citizens are shining their eyes well enough to ask the right questions. Thank you.